After all of the backlash over the last couple days, it looks like Morgan Adams has released a public apology for her collab with Trisha Paytas, and hopefully this is a wake-up call not only to Trisha Paytas, but to all of us. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. And what I like to do, I like to take different topics going on in the YouTube community, try to see what lessons we can learn from them to improve our own mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And if you just subscribe and ring that, ring that notification bell, for those of you who are new here, just so you know, like we only look at these different topics that are going on so we could do some self-reflection, all right? So I'm going to give you a little brief overview of what's going on. I'm going to read um, the apology that Morgan Adams sent out, but I'm going to share a little bit of my story and what I still try to do to this day to improve my mental and emotional well-being. So anyways, those of you who saw the video yesterday, um, Morgan Adams recently did a collab with Trisha Paytas and there was a lot of backlash, a lot. I showed some of the top comments on there, um, Insider Magazine even uh, covered it and how uh, Morgan's fans were really upset. So anyways, uh, Morgan Adams took to Twitter yesterday. Um, she probably released this on Instagram too, I'm not sure, but she put out an apology. All right, so it says, from the bottom of my heart, my intention always has been and always will be to make videos to make people laugh and be entertained. I know for a lot of people this video has crossed the line and I am truly sorry for anyone who has felt negatively from my actions and I hear you and I see you. I will always do my best to take your feedback and show you that I really do care. And I know mental health is so sensitive and personal to every individual, including me, and I'm sorry for my actions affecting you and will take full responsibility for that and hope to do better for you in the future. As for a timeline, we filmed with Trisha before any stay-at-home orders were in place. I stayed at my apartment alone for 25 days to make sure I wouldn't get my family sick, then came to stay with them. This was filmed over the course of a few weeks. Also, I see a lot of people saying their comments are being deleted. I appreciate and understand your feedback and value your feelings and haven't deleted any con uh, comments. YouTube filters through what the top comments are so people have new comments to read. I hope you know my heart was in the right place and I will take accountability for anyone who I have negatively impacted. I'm sorry, I love you, and I hope everyone is staying safe and healthy. All right, so real quick, there is this thing, right? And I know 99.9% .9 of you watching this are not YouTubers, but what I will say is try not to be so quick to accuse YouTubers of deleting comments. There are filters, YouTube organize them, just like Morgan Adams said, but yeah, like uh, I, I've seen people say like, oh, you, you deleted this comment, you check the filter and they're calling you an effing idiot, or sometimes, YouTube just filtered it for no reason. So cut Morgan some slack, as well as any other YouTuber when you believe they're deleting comments, all right? There is also a chance, also a chance, that the person who left the comment deleted their own comment because a lot of people put stuff out there and they don't think it's going to get so many views, right? Like somebody might have left something nasty and then it becomes the top comment and then maybe they're like, oh, maybe I don't want to be associated with this comment because a lot of us don't expect to get that much attention when, you know, we post something, right? So anyways, um, just to touch on the Morgan Adams uh, side of things slightly because I want to focus more on Trisha Paytas and self-improvement and all that. Um, I saw some of your comments and everything like, oh, you know, uh, you know, Morgan Adams has no control over Trisha Paytas, neither does Shane or Ryland, da 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 da. Yes, yes. Like, what we have to realize is, yeah, we don't have control over other people, but we do have control over who we hang around, right? Like, here's the thing, like, you guys, so I am a 34 year old man, God, I'm getting old, but, you know, I realized when I hung out with certain groups of friends, every time I went out, something crazy happened. Right? Like every time I went out with a certain group of friends or a certain friend, you know, just us going to hang out, something nuts happened. It was chaos, right? And then all of a sudden I was like, huh, well, if I'm trying to improve my life, if I'm trying to improve my mental and emotional well being, and every time I hang out with this person, something crazy goes down, maybe I need to remove myself from that situation. Like, you guys, let me tell you this right now. Like, I have a very 
small core group of friends. I mentioned this in the last video, but my life is so peaceful and full of serenity because I have eliminated the chaos. Like I still have a lot of friends from way back in my drinking, using and partying days, but I love them from a distance. Like I cannot have them in my life on a regular basis because of the chaos that they bring everywhere that they go, right? Now, this doesn't mean that I love them any less or I don't wanna be friends with them, but until they are willing to try to improve, right? Or to try to change that chaotic factor in their life, like, I can be there for them, you know, as long as I'm monitoring my own mental health, right? Like, you know, we all have those friends. We all have those friends where every time they message you, like the sky is falling and everything is crazy. Maybe it's somebody that they're hooking up with. Maybe it's, you know, their family and, or, or whatever it is, right? And we really have to be mindful of ourselves. Like something that I've been talking a lot um, with people about, especially during these crazy times, is something called empathy fatigue, all right? When we give too much of ourselves, it completely drains us mentally and emotionally, all right? So anyways, now let's get back to the Trisha Paytas aspect of this. And like I said in the beginning, I'm hoping it's a wake up call for her, but I'm hoping it's a wake up call for all of us. So what I had to realize in my life was I didn't want to get better, right? I was a drug addict, I was an alcoholic, I was absolutely nuts, I was, I was the chaotic friend. <laughs> the chaos I was just talking about, that used to be me, right? And I used to just wreak havoc wherever I went and I didn't care. I didn't care, I had this message to the world, this is who I am, if you don't like it, get to step it, right? Like that's the way I was living. But when I, when I really looked at it, I was like, holy crap, Chris, it's not just about you, right? Like your friends are embarrassed by your behavior. What you're doing, Chris, like when people associate with you, it is harming them. You see what I mean? So part of my own mental health journey, part of my sobriety journey was I had to quit thinking about myself, right? Like if I didn't wanna get better for myself, I had to get better for other people. I didn't want to be the drunken father showing up to my son's school events and embarrassing him, right? I had an alcoholic mother. These things happened to me when I was a kid. So I stopped thinking about me and saying, oh, I don't care if I embarrass myself. It's like, am I embarrassing him? Am I making my son look bad, right? I try to act right so I don't make my girlfriend look bad. I try to act right so I don't let uh, you know my parents look bad. The other thing is too, as a, as a person in long-term recovery, I am also very mindful, like even though I didn't ask for it, even though I didn't say, hey, you know, look at me, I am a representative of the recovery community, right? So I try to be mindful of that and what I do, what I say, how I, you know, maintain my sobriety, right? So we need to realize that. And it's the same thing with our jobs. We are a representative of our jobs. And I know like, you know, leave work at work, that is a huge part of life, right? But it's just human nature to associate us with these other things. So I have to remember that as well. So when I look at, you know, Trisha Paytas or all of us who might have Trisha-ish behaviors, you know, like Trisha Paytas has said many times, like, you know, this is my truth. This is how I am. You know, I struggle with mental health issues. I struggle with mental illness. And it's like, I get that. I get that. So many of us do. But I'm telling you right now, if you cannot find the, the, the willingness to get better for yourself and improve your life, start thinking about other people. You know what I mean? Like, especially for those of us in recovery, when I first got sober, like I, I didn't want to live like drugs and alcohol were the only things that woke me up in the morning and helped me move forward. Like just knowing I was going to get, uh, you know, get more and get drunk or high. Right. So when I got sober and that was taken away, like I had nothing to live for. So they say that you have to stay sober for yourself, but there were certain days when I had to stay sober for other people. So think about that, because I know a lot of you aren't struggling with addiction, but think about that with your depression, with your anxiety, with your trauma, with your bipolar disorder, with your borderline personality disorder, with whatever it is. Like maybe you don't want to do therapy, maybe you don't want to meditate, maybe you don't want to journal, right? But if you're struggling to find the willingness to do that, think about how you working on yourself can help your relationships. 
Think about how you going to therapy can help your relationship with your significant other, with your family, with your friends, with your job. Think about how journaling might help your relationships. You see what I mean? If we can't find the willingness to do it for ourselves, we get out of that mindset and we try to do it so we can foster healthier relationships in our life as a whole. So again, this video isn't just you know about what's going on with Trisha Paytas and Morgan Adams and Shane Dawson and all those other people. We need to reflect on our own lives. Use this as motivation to start improving your life on a day-to-day -day basis so you can have better relationships with the people you care about. You know what I mean? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel over on Patreon, as well as everybody who supports the channel by buying my mental health books at TheRewiredSoul.com or the merch from the merch store. You're all awesome. All right? Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.